The backdash is a staple mechanic in pretty much every single fighting game. Simply speaking, it allows your character to quickly reposition themselves or evade an enemy attack. However, this unassuming mechanic actually has a massive impact on how each fighting game it is present in plays, and serves a key role in the balancing of gameplay. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to discuss what balancing levers different games pull by making the backdash weaker or stronger, and how that affects the game flow of said title. Then finally, discuss a little bit of recent controversy regarding the accessibility of inputting a backdash. So sit back, double tap the recline button, and take a look at how much such a small mechanic can actually change. First of all, let's define what a backdash is. Simply speaking, it's a tool that allows your character a quick burst movement option in the backwards direction to reposition. The general rule of a backdash is that it has to move your character back in some capacity, but everything else is up to the developers. Oftentimes, the speed and distance of the backdash is different between character to character even inside of the same game, which has an important impact on how strong or weak that character's backdash, and by extension, the character as a whole is. A quick backdash is very desirable because it allows access to the burst movement option without risking a substantial punish that might end up hitting the recovery of a slower backdash, allowing it to be used as a defensive escape tool in neutral. Additionally, a faster backdash will allow for you to take more turns from your opponent if you backdash a button, and in some cases even allow you to punish an attack on whiff you otherwise couldn't have. The distance of a backdash is another big factor as to how strong or weak a backdash is, however a large distance can be both a blessing or a curse. Extra distance traveled can be valuable when trying to escape from an opponent and reset neutral, or get out of the way of a larger button, but at the same time, a backdash putting you far away from the opponent lowers the chance that you might be able to force a positive interaction after creating a whiff. Oftentimes larger backdashes tend to have longer duration as well, further emphasizing that problem. Of course, a character with a very large backdash can use it to great effect, but it comes with the trade-off of maybe not being able to use it as a momentum reversal option, and this stings even more if the character in question doesn't perform too well in neutral. Once again, these levers can be pulled to balance between characters in the same game, but many games also have universal traits that make their backdash weaker or stronger. Of course, a game can trend toward having a higher number of either fast or long distance backdashes, but there are a number of other things games can do to balance the backdash further. A less looked upon but very impactful balancing factor is the combo state after getting hit out of a backdash. Oftentimes, backdashes are airborne, but some games make sure their backdashes have a unique airborne hit state to stop massive punishes from working on backdashes. This often comes in the form of a forced tech or flip out, letting the backdash still retain some of its utility if it's caught, and even sometimes creating a punish opportunity when hit by a long recovery button. Street Fighter and Samurai Showdown have backdashes that force techs when hit out of them. DNF Duel's backdashes on punish net the opponent a full combo on hit, so it can be extremely risky to backdash even from a long distance away in that game. A combination of all of these things is how games tend to balance their backdashes and in turn the backdashes balance offensive options in said game. If your game has long distance backdashes with no invulnerability, characters with long range normals may end up being stronger than they would have otherwise. If your game has lots of invulnerability on backdashes, characters with quick recovery buttons or long active frame buttons may benefit from the ability to option select backdashes or be entirely safe to them while running pressure. If your game has backdashes that let your opponent tech out early into an attack, high damage, high recovery buttons gain a significant risk they wouldn't have otherwise. All of these things serve a very important role in the balancing ecosystem of a fighting game, and changing one thing about a backdash can end up having a cascading effect on the balance of the entire game. Before we start talking about backdash inputs, let's take a look at a few unique backdashes throughout fighting games and show what effect they have on the character they're on. First up is Potemkin's backdash in Guilty Gear Exard Rev 2. Right off the bat, you'll notice two things with this one. It's very, very slow, and it has a lot of invuln. This changes the use of the backdash from a mobility or repositioning tool entirely and makes it only good at one thing, baiting and punishing normals. And for that purpose, it is incredible. Combined with Potemkin's incredibly high damaging Potemkin Buster command grab, his backdash ends up serving utility as a tool not unlike a parry, where a well-timed backdash can end up winning him the game. Again from Guilty Gear Exard, we're going to be talking about Slayer's backdash. Now Slayer's backdash is unique in that he teleports a set distance as opposed to simply moving backwards quickly. This grants him very low recovery on his backdash, letting him use it similarly to how Potemkin's is used, but with a very important additional usage that defines Slayer as a character. During the disappearing frames of the backdash, Slayer can cancel the backdash into any other move, such as a jump or attack. This is called a BDC, and it's maybe the scariest reversal option in the game. 
Not only is Slayer able to punish more attacks with his backdash than any other character in the game, he can do so nearly without risk, as the invuln from the backdash carries over into the state he cancels into, meaning an attack like Mappa Hunch cannot be interrupted before it comes in contact with the player, and if Slayer cancels his backdash into a jump, he gets an invulnerable escape option to take him out of the corner or risky position. Lastly, I want to bring up Seth from Uni. Seth has a very unique backdash thanks to the fact that it contextualizes a key trait of backdashes in a unique and impactful way. Remember how I said most backdashes are airborne, then touch down at the end of the dash? Well, Seth's actually recovers high up into the air, meaning his backdash can be used to hop back, then above certain attacks, and dive down with an attack on an unsuspecting opponent. This complements Seth's offensive playstyle and allows him to mix up his mobility in unique and threatening ways, as he can choose to also stay grounded by holding down back during the dash, meaning the opponent has to guess where he's going to go and respond appropriately. Now let's talk about something juicy the input. You see, backdashes have almost always been inputted with a double tap back, similar to forward dashes. However, in recent games, the developers have started adding a dash button, which allows you to backdash simply by pressing the button while holding back. This is an extremely controversial design decision with massive impact on the game's overall balance, so allow me to explain why. Backdashes when inputted with a double back input are significantly weaker than backdashes inputted with a button because of the extended duration and vulnerability it takes to perform the input. When inputting a backdash with double tap back, you must press back, let go, return to neutral, then press back again. Of course you can do this very quickly, but that is still two inputs while a backdash is only one. Also, double tap back requires the return of neutral before starting the double tapping of back, which if you're playing a fight again without a block button, i.e. most of them, this means you cannot block while inputting a backdash. With a dash button, not only can you block for the entirety of the time it takes for you to begin inputting the backdash, but it happens as soon as you press the button. This allows for much stricter timing windows to have reasonable backdash spots than with double back input. To give you an example, let me show you a standard Gatling in Guilty Gear. Between these two attacks in both Guilty Gear games, there is a two frame gap. In Guilty Gear x there is no dash button, and you have to double tap back to do a backdash. This puts you at risk of the opponent choosing a different Gatling route and catching you on one of the two times that you have to stop blocking to input the backdash. With a backdash button, this simply cannot happen. It is impossible to punish the start of a backdash because the input is instantaneous and you are blocking the whole time. This means it's not only much more safe, but also much more feasible to react to the gap in backdash. If you notice a window coming up within, say, the next 5 frames, where you can backdash if you're quick in a game with a backdash button, you simply have to time your button press right. For a game without one, the process is much more complicated. Once you see the backdash window coming up, you need to preemptively return to neutral, quickly flick back, go back to neutral, then flip back again in perfect timing with the gap, activating the backdash in timing with the backdash window, and executing the backdash successfully. This is much, much harder for reasons I'd expect you to understand already, but let's go over it one more time. With the first example, not only can you react later, but you don't have the added challenge of having to remember how long it takes for the window to appear and start buffering the backdash so that it finishes right as the window to escape occurs. You can simply just press the button when you see the window of opportunity. If you're too early on example 1, you'll just not get the backdash if you're in block zone and continue to block the opponent's strength. In example 2, you can get hit at neutral if you input it too early and get punished. Too late is the same as well. If you do the backdash later than you had to do in example 1, you're more likely still blocking it, and that's okay. But with example 2, since you've stopped blocking briefly to input the backdash, you can end up taking some serious damage. All of these factors add weaknesses to the backdash that completely go away if a dash button is added, and doing so can end up shifting the game balance in a dangerous direction. However, let's stop playing devil's advocate for a second and talk about the upsides to having a dash macro in your game. First and foremost, the accessibility. Double tapping back can be tricky for some people to do quickly and repetitively, and it's objectively tough to backdash when it really counts no matter your skill level. Adding a button bridges the gap between newer and legacy players, and also allows the mechanic to interact with the game with less barriers in its way, which can clear up the game design and make the game more intuitive to play. For example, in a situation where there is a small backdashable gap in a game without a backdash button, sometimes you have to ask the question, is it reasonable or worth it to try to backdash here? There's almost never a clear answer, and that can be hard not only for devs to balance around, but for players to learn to deal with. With a button, these situations can be a lot more analog and developers can balance relying on the fact that players have the ability to escape and don't have to worry as much as a result. 
Not only does the dash button bridge the gap between casual and competitive player bases, but it's also an elegant answer to controller differences between players. If you're playing on a fight stick, you'll likely have more trouble in putting a back dash than a player on pad or hitbox because the action of moving a lever back, forward, then back again is slower than simply pressing the back button twice. With a dash button, back dash becomes a technique that stands on equal footing so long as your controller has a button, which unless you're playing on your Samsung smart fridge, it probably does. Backdash on a button also lets the player feel more in control of their movement due to the more analog input and response, and better game feedback is always a good thing. As you can see, a dash button can end up benefiting fighting games a lot when present, but remember, tacking one onto an existing game is a dangerous and potentially destructive decision. When a game is designed without a dash button in mind, adding one increases the strength of defensive backdashes in a way that can end up being super toxic to the overall game experience. Remember when we discussed Slayer's ability to backdash through attacks then cancel onto a counterattack or movement option? Imagine if every time an opportunity to backdash arose, he simply just had to press a button and would nail this reversal every single time instead of having to risk the long input of a backdash and risk messing up and getting hit. I'm sure a world like that would shake the hearts of even the bravest souls. Hopefully this video helped you realize the vast importance of this fighting game mechanic that for some reason often goes under the radar when it comes to fighting game balance discussion. For now though, that's all. This has been Adventure, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.